WatchOS 10 had some big updates with a redesigned home app, weather app, and better access to health via Siri. There's also features like name drop, the double tap feature on Series 9 and Ultra 2 that came in 10.1, and they brought back some familiar features like swiping the different watch faces in 10.2. So I'm gonna give you my current top 10 features for WatchOS 10. And yes, I'm using a different microphone today. There's a lot of people in the house, so this one will hopefully cut out some more background noise. All right, number one, the swiping between watch faces was actually taken out in WatchOS 10 and brought back in 10.2. To enable this feature, go down to the settings on your Apple Watch, then go down to clock. Here in the clock settings, you'll see swipe to switch watch faces and you'll want to toggle that on. And now you can have all your watch faces and swipe between them easily. Just swipe from edge to edge on the screen. Number two, name drop can actually be done on the Apple Watch and a phone with iOS 17 or another Apple Watch. In order to enable this, you do have to go down to the contacts app on your Apple Watch, tap your face here in the upper right hand corner of the contacts app. And now you can actually share this via name drop. Hold another Apple Watch or iPhone near and name drop will trigger and you'll share your contacts from your Apple Watch. This works on Series 7, SE2, and newer. Number three, you now have more access to your health settings via Siri on the Apple Watch. I can hold a button and say, how many hours did I sleep last night? And you actually get that measurement right here. You can also do things like, how many steps did I take today? And you'll see your step count. It's still early, don't at me. You can also do things like log your weight, ask it for your heart rate. Speaking of sleep ages, another update in watchOS 10 was the sleep app here on Apple Watch has been redesigned to actually show you your sleep stages right here. Beautiful redesign, you get the graphical representation right here. You get to see the hours of awake, REM, core, and deep. You can scroll down and see your total hours and trends across the last week and your next bedtime and alarm. Lots of great redesigns here on the watch in watchOS 10. Another great redesign has been the now playing screen. If you're playing a podcast, you now get that podcast custom episode artwork right here on your Apple Watch face. And you can even tap it to get all the controls to disappear. You see it even larger, looks great. Plus you can also skip forward, skip back and pause right here on the Apple Watch. And pressing the three dots, you can change where it's playing back, whether your iPhone or send it to another destination like a HomePod. I also love when you're playing like a YouTube video on your phone, you'll actually see that now playing screen pop up on your Apple Watch with the video thumbnail right here. And in the same way, you can tap it, make it larger right here on the Apple Watch, pause it if it's playing on your phone, fast forward. Love the new now playing screen on Apple Watch. And you even get those details if you bring up the control center on the Apple Watch, you can swipe up from the middle of the screen, you can see it playing right here, and then I can tap it and jump right back to that now playing screen. Speaking of which, I'm not putting this as a feature because honestly, I'm not quite used to it. I used to swipe up for control center all the time, and now the control center is the side button on the Apple Watch. I'm getting used to it slowly, still not there yet, but a swipe up from the middle of the screen brings up that control center or a swipe up from the very bottom. I don't use a lot of these widgets, although I do use the now playing screen, but otherwise I kind of wish I could customize that with a toggle to keep the control center as that swipe up from the bottom. Next up is the double tap feature, which is only on the Series 9 or Ultra 2. I haven't found a lot of ways to use it, but if you're playing music or a podcast, you can double tap and it will automatically pause what's playing. If it's paused, you can double tap and then it will automatically start playing. That's kind of useful, although I usually just tap the screen. Otherwise, if you get a text message like through your watch, you can actually double tap. It will automatically go to the dictation and then you can dictate a reply to that text message and then send it without ever tapping the watch face. Double tap again and it will automatically send it. I'm curious if you've been using double tap often, if you've been able to get an Apple Watch, you know it was banned for like a day. Let me know down in the comments where you find double tap to be the most useful. All right, number seven is actually an app redesign, which is the weather app. I actually do like this in the control center. The weather app has a nice hour by hour forecast representation. The entire weather app was redesigned with a great current weather screen. Scroll down for that hour by hour. It just looks great in watchOS 10. And the multiple locations also look a lot more like the iPhone version of the app. Another great app redesign was the home app in watchOS 10. The home app always felt kind of janky on the older versions of the Apple Watch but now you get quick access to things like your rooms and scenes. And when you're actually in an individual room, you have the scenes right up top. They look exactly like they do in the home app on your iPhone or your Mac. And then controlling individual devices is really nice. You can tap the little three dots, choose how fast you want a ceiling fan to go. Like I'm using my Lutron switch here. Really love the look of the home map in watchOS 10. Feature number nine, which is not really a feature, but just a watch face is the modular ultra watch face. I wasn't crazy about the font initially, and I'm still not crazy about it, honestly but I do like how many complications I can put on here. Six complications total, plus a long widget. I like my weather hour by hour forecast because Florida changes just about hour by hour. And you can choose things like having the seconds tick along the edges, or you can also have your elevation show in those side ticks. You can also choose the various clock sizes if you would like. 
I've gotten used to it and just really like the Modular Ultra. Also, on a side note, if you want quick access to name drop your contact from your Apple Watch, maybe you're at a conference and you want to be able to do it quickly, a great way is to actually choose one of these small circle complications and actually put the contacts complication with your card, put it right there on your watch face, and then with that complication, just a single tap, and you're ready to name drop your contact to someone else right from your watch. Number 10, and this might seem minor, but Medications is now on the Apple Watch. Medications was just in the health app on iPhone, and now you can actually have medications, including reminders, and mark whether or not you've taken them right here on the Apple Watch. You can see your reminders, what medications you have coming up. You can log that you actually took that medication right here on your watch. You can say taken or skip. This is great, especially if you have maybe an older family member or someone just has a lot of medications and maybe it's hard to keep track of. I really like being able to have it right here on the watch, easy to get to. And maybe if you're setting this up for someone else, you can actually have medications as a complication. This way they can jump right to that from the Apple Watch face, see what medications they've already taken that day, which ones they still have, and everyone can keep track of it. You can also go in the health app on your iPhone and any medication supplements that you add here on your iPhone will also be synced to your Apple Watch. You can also choose options like adding follow-up reminders. So if you forget to take it exactly when that reminder comes in, it will send follow-ups until you mark the medication as taken. So those are my top 10 watchOS new features. Let me know which is your favorite down in the comments. And again, if you have other use cases for that double tap that you have just found invaluable, I'd love to hear about it down below. Don't forget to subscribe before you go, hit that like button, and I'll put two videos right up here that might interest you. You can click one of those as well. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Are you still watching? I know this is like the real ones, the true subscribers, because you're watching till the very, very end of this video. So if you are, I just want to say thank you. I started this year with, I think, a couple thousand subscribers and about to hit 45,000, maybe even 50,000 by the end of the year. That's optimistic, but would be pretty cool. And uh, excited for 100K next year. I think with Vision Pro and some of the big updates to iPhone and iPad especially, I think it's reasonable. And it's thanks to you. So thanks for watching, commenting, liking, sharing the content. And it's just been an awesome ride this past year, really putting a concerted effort into YouTube and seeing you guys respond really well. So just wanted to say thank you for watching. If you're watching till the very end of the videos, I know this is for you and I really appreciate it. So hope you'll keep joining me as I make content into the next year. And let me know what else you would like to see down in the comments, whether it's more shortcuts. I know a lot of people want to see that more setup videos like I just did with the iPhone, hour long video on setting up a new iPhone. Let me know what you find useful, what you'd like to see more of, more accessories, things like that. So for you, thanks for watching, subscribing, notifications on, all of that. Really appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned. I might have something for you to listen to uh, very soon as well. Thanks again. Catch you next time.